Welcome, welcome back, back adventurers. I wanted to speak candidly about uh, my current feelings on Pokemon as a franchise, uh, the direction it's going in, uh, stagnation, and the need to evolve. Now, this was a scripted video, but it feels a little bit weird, like reading just directly from a script. So some of this is going to be scripted and, and some of this is just going to be me just talking. So yeah. <laughs> This is the Kanto Power Plant from Pokemon Red and Blue. It's a completely optional location that has nothing to do with the story. I mean, it's off the beaten path. It needs, I think you need Surf to even access it. But what's really cool about this location is that it's an abandoned husk of what it once was. So you get to explore it and as you do, it's teeming with electric Pokemon and you have to fight them as you try and like find your way through this maze of branching paths. Some of these paths lead to dead ends, others lead to items, TMs, camouflaged electrodes, but one path leads to one of the game's rarest Pokemon, and that's uh, one of the legendary bird trio, Zapdos. Now, let's look at Pokemon Sword and Shield and the Galar region energy plan. Much like Kanto's plan, it appears in the late game, it houses a legendary Pokemon, I think Eternatus in this case, but that of course is where the similarities end. Instead of a winding maze, you are presented with a single room housing a legendary and you get a cutscene with Chairman Rose. That's it. It serves no other purpose. I think maybe you have a battle there, if I'm remembering it correctly. So to me, this clearly underlines the problem that I personally have with modern Pokemon games, and that's the overall direction Game Freak has taken them. Now, before you brand me as a fake Pokemon fan, some hater nobody with a garbage opinion, let's roll this back. Now, I've been a fan of Pokemon since the beginning. I grew up with Pokemon. The first games came out when I was 10 years old. That's the same age as Ash Ketchum when he started his Pokemon adventure in the anime. And that was incredibly influential to me at the time. I mean, back then Pokemon was a cultural phenomenon. It was everywhere. The anime, the games, the trading card game, the merchandise. Everyone was obsessed and that kind of experience sticks with you. I've been a fan through every single generation, except Sun and Moon, but I that's it came out at a time where I'd pretty much given up on the 3DS. But anyway, I'm still a Pokemon fan today. Last October, for instance, I camped out in the freezing cold to visit the uh, pop-up Pokemon Center in London. And it's gonna sound weird, but contrary to popular belief, I don't actually hate Pokemon Sword and Shield. I actually really enjoyed my time with them. Well, Sword, because I didn't buy Sword and Shield, I only bought, bought Sword. Anyway, <laughs> being the games that are set in the Pokemon equivalent of the UK was always going to grant my favour, and it's a fantastic video game in its own right. I just don't think it's a very good Pokemon game. But you're probably asking what I mean by that. What is the problem with Sword and Shield? What makes them so bad compared to other titles? Am I angry because my favorite Pokemon was cut from the game? Like so many national Dexers? No, no I'm not. Although I can understand the annoyance of the bring back national Dex crowd. I mean, learning that this series tagline, gotta catch them all, doesn't apply anymore. And not being able to bring over your favorite Pokemon to the most recent release, that kind of stings. I get it. But of course, I also get the fact that the national Dex is not sustainable. The more Pokemon that are added to the game, the more development time it takes. And that isn't realistic at this point with so many Pokemon. But at the same time, it also stings again to know that Game Freak has re-added the Pokemon back via DLC. And I know what you're going to say, yes, you can trade with people that own the DLC. You don't have to buy the DLC in order to obtain those Pokemon. You can trade with someone that has purchased the DLC. But unfortunately, I really don't think that holds up. Up. They could have easily added these Pokemon into the wild area of Sword and Shield as free content at the same time as they released the expansion pass release, but it also feels like they need to justify a $30 price point on their two DLC packs. This is all beside the point, of course, and none of this justifies some of the behavior we've been seeing from the Bring Back National Dexes. Apparently there's been death threats, brigading Game Freak employees, like some really 
crappy stuff, just like the abhorrent acts of children that are not justified. And seriously, if you're doing this, stop. That said, this doesn't mean that all criticism of the games becomes invalid or inherently unfounded. Toxicity can be found on both sides, and that's always a good idea to remember that. But with that PSA over, what is my actual issue with Sword and Shield? Let me tell you. Some minor gripes, first of all. The, these aren't really big problems, but at the same time, I figured it was still worth a mention. There is the lack of voice acting, which, if Zelda can do it, I think it's time that Game Freak invested in some voice talent. There is the lack of player customization. What we have now is pretty shallow. The lack of interesting battle animations. And I know this is kind of a big bugbear for a lot of people. I mean, it would be nice if they gave us a little bit more than static movements, shaking and rotating character models, and the fact that certain Pokemon have kick animations, but double kick isn't a kick animation. It's confusing. Oh, then there's also bad optimization. The game's render distance is awful, even in towns. It causes noticeable pop-in in both Sword and Shield. Even inside of towns, NPCs pop in and out of existence. And I'm really hoping that now that the DLC has dropped, that this is a problem that will be over, or if a sequel gets released, and Game Freak has more time to work with the engine, that it'll just be a thing of the past and all those te technical hitches just go away. But at the same time, all I can think about is a game like Breath of the Wild has like massive dragons like off in the distance on the horizon over like two kilometers away in this sprawling open world. And it just makes me think, wow, could, did Game Freak just not know how to handle something like this? With all that said, and with all that out of the way, I have one big problem with the current Pokemon games. They're shallow. But what does that mean? Well, it kind of means that complex game design seems to be a thing of the past. No one can really argue that Pokemon Sword and Shield are extremely linear experiences. I mean, you just go from town to town in a big circle, and you'll find that most routes are pretty straightforward and populated with very few trainers to battle. In fact, going back to my initial point, dungeons in general seem to be a thing of the past. They're completely gone in Sword and Shield. There are no dungeons or complex routes. And that's something that I really loved about the early Pokemon games. They had complex game design. Red and Blue had the SSM. It had Team Rocket's Hideout. Sylph Co, Lavender Town's Pokemon Tower, as well as interesting and challenging routes through the game like Viridian Forest, Mount Moon, Rock Tunnel, and of course, Victory Road. Now these are all mazes of varying difficulty. Each one has nooks and crannies, hidden items, and even like hidden trainers sometimes that can ambush you. And of course, in stark contrast, Sword and Shield's Victory Road equivalent, Route 10, is literally a straight line with trainers either side of the path leading to the last city. Essentially, it's a glorified nugget bridge from Generation 1. And it seems to be a repeating path Pattern, that there is a lot of style over substance in Sword and Shield. For instance, out in the wild area you'll find interesting landmarks like this crumbling tower. It's not too far-fetched to have the expectation that this is a location that you could enter and explore. Instead, it turns out to be set dressing for a ghostly patch of wild area and a raid den. And this even spreads into the towns themselves. I've heard it said that they feel like movie sets. And I get it, they feel empty with very few houses that you can enter, most of which serve no purpose, not even housing hidden items. A big bugbear of mine is that one of the towns in the game is literally a gym. The whole town is a gym. It feels like in certain circumstances, Game Freak could have done so much more, but didn't. And of course, while we're on the topic of gyms, some of them are great. They start out super strong with like mini games and puzzles but as you start to get towards the end of the game, it starts to fall apart. Now, I've already mentioned Spike Myth Gym, which was an extremely underwhelming experience. What follows it is your return to Hammerlock and taking on that gym, which again, turns out to be a single room with several battles and no puzzles at all. Uh, literally, the trainers just line up to battle you one by one. As a Pokemon fan, this was incredibly, again, underwhelming. 
and it felt like the game had run out of steam, having no more interesting content to offer, so instead opting to rush you through the rest of the story, which was disappointing. And then of course there's the game's incessant hand-holding, and this, I know this isn't isolated just to the Sword and Shield games, it's something that has been steadily growing more noticeable as the games have progressed. Mandatory tutorials, rivals that are actually friends and not real rivals, who actively offer to heal you every chance they get, take a step, they heal you. EXP candies that make the game far too easy to overlevel Pokemon and demolish any trainer in the game. I mean, even the EXP share can't be turned off. Game Freak even had the audacity to say that if you want to level up one Pokemon, you have to make them the only Pokemon in your party. Really, Game Freak? The point is, all of this removes a lot of flexibility and playstyle in favour of making the game easier, or at the very least, far more streamlined. Now, this isn't to say that there haven't been a lot of quality of life improvements, and that these changes have made putting together a competitive team so much easier. That's great. I kind of love that. But as someone who's not really interested in the competitive side of Pokemon, or breeding, and is just playing the game for the experience, it makes the game feel incredibly shallow. The least they could have done is lock some of these competitive features behind the end game. But again, it feels like Game Freak has chosen accessibility over game design. Now, a lot of this could be explained away by a rushed development cycle. Game Freak was no doubt under pressure from both the Pokemon company and Nintendo to hit release deadlines. But if that's the case, then that makes this a rushed game. And you know what they say, a delayed game may eventually be good, but a rushed game is bad forever. And listen, I know we live in an age of day one patches, hot fixes, and DLC, but a rushed game will still taint how players view that game. Recent releases have shown that much. Fallout 76, Anthem, Mass Effect Andromeda. The truth is most people are willing to wait a little longer for a video game release if it means the end product will be better. I mean, look at Cyberpunk 2077, they've just delayed their game again for another two months. I'm very excited about that by the way. I'm just hoping that in this case, a rush game does equal a good game. But I'm kind of going completely off topic. You know, for a game about evolution, it's really hard to come to terms with the idea that Pokemon has avoided just that. Evolving. This isn't to say that Pokemon hasn't changed, Game Freak has added new features, those quality of life improvements, better graphics in most places. I mentioned it before, those changes are making competitive play and breeding far easier. But at its core, Pokemon is the same game it's always been. You start in a small town, battle your way through linear story, gyms, an evil organization, and then you become the champion of that region's Pokemon League equivalent. It's the same Pokemon formula every single time. And and as someone who's grown up with the game, you kind of develop an expectation that the games you play will grow with you. But instead it kind of feels like Pokemon as a series is going backwards rather than forwards. Fans like myself have been waiting for something. A Pokemon renaissance of sorts. Something you could say happened to another series that I hold near and dear to my heart, The Legend of Zelda. Much like Pokemon, it had gotten stuck in a cycle of repetition without any major innovation. And then of course came Breath of the Wild, a game that threw the Zelda rulebook out the window, innovating on the original concept of Zelda 1 on the NES, and offering a brand new approach to the game. This is the exact kind of shakeup I think could make Pokemon so much more fulfilling. A while back, in a Twitter argument I had, I wrote that I wasn't worried about Game Freak taking criticism, and that I was more concerned about the fanboys who couldn't take an ounce of criticism. What followed were replies from fans assuming they knew what my problems were with Sword and Shield, and wrote me off without even knowing what my criticisms were. It was incredibly toxic behaviour, but that said, one comment stuck with me. Game Freak is an incredibly successful company with the most successful media franchise of all time. They're doing just fine. I don't think they need business lessons from upset kids on the internet. So putting aside the idea that the amount of money something makes isn't indicative of its quality. This is exactly right in a roundabout way. Pokemon is the biggest selling media franchise of all time. There's no reason for them to change a successful formula. Why would they take that risk? I mean, they can continue to go at their own pace, slowly iterating on the core games until fans start buying it. And honestly, I think at this point, Pokemon is 
too big to fail. And I don't really think that this is a situation that can be fixed. There is not really much that fans can do. In an ideal world, you would hope that competition from other similar franchises like Yokai Watch or Temtem would cause Game Freak to make positive changes in the Pokemon franchise. But at the end of the day, Yokai Watch, Temtem, they're not Pokemon. So honestly, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Sword and Shield are the highest selling Pokemon games to date. Fans are happy buying Pokemon, even when they complain about it. And I get that. I enjoyed the game and I'm still a Pokemon fan. I just want more now, not less. And maybe nothing should be done. Maybe I've just become a jaded fan that's outgrown Pokemon. It's always possible that the DLC that's just dropped has solved some of these issues, but from what I've been hearing, that's not the case. Pokemon is worse now, but it's also better. And that's a complicated place to be in as someone who loves the series so much. My main worry is that the lack of any true innovation from Game Freak will lead to a stagnation of the series, eventually becoming a zombified corpse of its former self, driven only by nostalgia and quality of life improvements. And honestly, it feels like that's the direction it's going in, which is incredibly heartbreaking as the series has always been one of the greatest game franchises of all time, and it still can be. I'm just hoping that Game Freak is given the time and motivation to incorporate the ideas that made an entire generation fall in love with this series, the things that made these games what they were. But that's just my opinion, and I'd love to hear yours. Do you agree or disagree? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the game, how you feel about Pokemon currently. I'd love to continue this conversation down in the comments. It's taken me so long to record this video because I've been so scared about potential pushback from fans of the series. So try and keep it respectful, if possible. And hey, if you didn't totally hate this, leave a like on the video. Maybe hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Over 90% of my viewers aren't subscribed, so do hit that button if you want more gaming discussion videos, reactions, gameplay, all that good stuff. And hell, if you like me that much, you can check out the Patreon and support me for as little as one dollar a month. For real, it's like, it's kind of a really cool thing right now, considering everything that's been going on. But until we meet again, have a great day, and I will see you next time, adventurer.